Hello and welcome to the Paragon of Play podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Spice, and today I'm with a special guest, um, myself. Yeah, I decided I would do a solo episode today to talk about something that I think is really important to talk about, and I bet it's on a lot of people's minds, so let's get right into it. And it's post-secondary education when you're just a little bit older. I'm not old, but... A lot of people my age think they're old, so I guess I'll just dive right into my post-secondary journey, and I'll start back at the beginning. So I went to college right out of high school. This wasn't originally my plan. My mom kind of forced me, but I'm really thankful that she did. A lot of the people around me were not going to college or were going to, well, they were claiming that they were going to just take some time to relax or to party or to work before they went to college. And so that sounded like a really good idea to my underdeveloped 18-year-old brain. And I kind of just made the decision that I would just take a year off, I would work, I would party, I would have a good time, and then I'd go to college after that. Well, my mom would have none of that. Um, Neither of my parents have a post-secondary education. Well, that's not true. My dad went to trade school and I think Trade school is just the same as any other post-secondary option. Um, But anyways, they didn't go to like college. um, But to them, their children getting a post-secondary education was very important. So my mom basically put me in a chair, held me there and said, you're applying to school now, whether you like it or not. And so... um, I applied to the early childhood education program at my local college, and I can't exactly remember how I decided that that was the program I was going to just like to apply to. I'm guessing in careers in civics, we probably, I don't remember high school, Um, I'm guessing in careers in civics, we were required, we were invited to investigate jobs and college choices. And I think we did this game, this program, and my fellow 30-ish year olds, is it called career cruising? I think it was called career cruising. Comment below and let me know if I'm right or if I'm totally crazy here. And I remember it had like a spectrum of faces that went from like a green, very happy face all the way to like a red, angry face. And I think when questions like, do you like kids came up or do you like to serve your community? Uh, Do you enjoy playing outside? I'm sure when questions like that came up, I was picking that green happy face. And I do remember that daycare teacher came up every time I did career cruising. I got kind of addicted to career cruising. (laughs) I remember doing it a lot in high school because I always like to change the answers and see what different jobs you would get just out of curiosity. But when I was actually seriously doing career cruising, I remember always getting daycare teacher. I'd always wanted to be a teacher. My teachers were always my role models growing up. I loved my teachers and teachers made such a big difference in my life. And uh, the idea of working with really young kids like in a daycare was really appealing to me. It sounded like just the most amazing experience I, I could possibly have. So I think that's how I learned that early childhood education was a thing. It was a course you could take. And so then when I was sat down in the chair and told, you're going to apply to college right now, uh, I knew exactly what program I was going to apply to. And it was early childhood education. I don't think I applied to any other programs. I think I applied to other schools because the price that you paid, it probably doesn't work this way anymore, but like you pay a flat fee, I don't know, $100, and it gives you five schools that you, five colleges that you can apply to, and so it just applied to five different schools that had the ECE program, and obviously I went to the school that I was closest to. I wasn't one of those kids that was like desperate to get away from their parents and start a new life in a new town. I would much rather live at home and use the toilet that I'm comfortable with and have my own curtains and not have to deal with roommates like doing things. So uh, yeah, definitely wanted to go to my hometown college. 
anyways, I, I took the ECE program. I was in it. I loved it. Um, I learned a lot from it. There's this terrible misconception of what early childhood education's, education programs are. And I don't know where this misconception comes from. Maybe it's just lazy lack of thought on behalf of most people. But it seems to be thought that the program goes like this. It's a babysitting course where you learn some songs and you uh, learn how to talk to two-year-olds. And uh, that's about it, right? Like that's what people act like ECE is. And it's just, it's not. Like I don't think I would be capable of being the teacher that I am without having the background in early childhood education. In my ECE course, I learned about child development. So their physical, their language development, cognitive development, how they learn. Um, I learned about the development of human beings from birth through to old age. In order to be able to program and implement a program that's effective for students, we really have to understand their developmental trajectory so that we can plan, plan appropriately. And so this idea that we just focus on babies and singing songs to them is just so wrong. There's so much psychology and science involved in an early childhood education program. You learn about research and program planning and program development and implementation. There are so many important aspects to what's in an early childhood education program that it shocks me that First of all, we don't pay early childhood educators an appropriate wage in 99% of the opportunities that are available. And there's just a baseline level of disrespect and almost like, I don't know, hatred towards early childhood educators. And it's just, it's exhausting to even think about. And I won't get too much on that topic at this exact second. So anyways, uh, loved the early childhood education program. I took my first year on campus and I did my second year online because I ended up having a baby. <laughs> my son was born in my second year of the program. I think just before the second year started actually is what I mean. And so I, I worked from home on my course and I finished school at the same time as everyone else. I wasn't going to let anything slow me down. And if anything, becoming a mom really kind of gave me that push to do the best I could do and to really want to excel in the program. I didn't excel. Life got in the way of me getting the grades that I should have gotten. But anyways, second year online was pretty cool. I enjoyed myself. Um, online learning was a little bit different 10 years ago than it is now, but uh, I definitely recall the programming being just as good as in school. So luckily after graduation, I was hired right out the gate from a daycare that I had done a lot of my placements in. And I loved working in daycare. I mainly worked in preschool. Preschool, oh, favorite age group to work with fascinating the just the development that's happening in that you know two and a half to four and a half year old age range is just so cool from week to week you just see their language explode I think language development is definitely my favorite because it shapes it's it, it's affected by their personality and it shapes the way that they're able to communicate. So as their sentences get longer and more complicated and they start to really uncover the nuances of an Engl the, any language, it just it's really spectacular to watch it evolve week by week and month by month. It, it's just it makes me feel like a scientist working with preschoolers and they're such little scientists. And I don't know, it's just really inspiring to work with preschool age group. So that's kind of where I was the majority of the time when I was working in childcare. And it was just really cool. So as time went on, I kind of noticed that I really wasn't okay with earning a poverty wage for a career that I knew was important and valuable and that I was putting all of myself into. Again, I'm not going to get too much into the topic of ECE pay because that's like, 
another podcast for another day, but I knew I needed to look for a position that paid a slightly more appropriate wage, and I kind of just wanted a new challenge. You know, where can I put myself where I could really challenge myself to kind of um, find some new ideas and find new ways of doing things, get some inspiration? And I decided to apply to my local school board. And I was really lucky. I got a permanent position right away. I think it was at the end of the five-year rollout of the FDK program. And I was so lucky. Like, oh, I can't even describe how lucky I was that I got permanent right away. So in my first year as a school board ECE, oh, like... I wish that everyone could have as good of a first year as I did. The two teachers I worked with, I was at one school for the first half of the year up until Christmas break, and I was at another school the other half of the year. Um, They needed me to cover a mat leave before I went to a permanent position, so that's how that worked out. But anyways, gosh, it was a good first year. The people I worked with and the schools I was in inspired me even more than I had already been. The, I I don't know. They were just, I worked with these empathetic, professional, dedicated, great human beings who were passionate about what they did. And they were passionate about helping and supporting families and doing the best for their students and furthering themselves as professionals. And it just felt really, really good. It felt really energizing. I felt like I was developing my passion for early education all over again. And it kind of inspired me to think about becoming an OCT. I kind of wondered in the back of my head, like, what's grade one like? What about grade two? What about grade three? And I was kind of itching to get back to school. How cool would it be to go to university? University was something that was not on my radar in high school. I took college level courses. I struggled a bit from grade six in school onward. At the time, I didn't know I was having mental health problems because that was something that just wasn't in my vocabulary. It wasn't on my radar. It wasn't something people talked about back then. Back then, I'm saying it as if I'm like 100 years old, but you know what I mean. Today, I feel like kids in the general public talk about mental health, and I feel comfortable saying right now that I had poor mental health then, and it just sucks that I didn't know at the time that I was struggling, so I couldn't ask for help, and I, no one knew what signs to look for in a struggling child. So my grades weren't great. I went to college level high school courses. And so college was the only option presented to me. And so it was the only option I considered. But now that I was surrounded by university educated people who I felt really connected to and I felt really inspired by, I felt like I wanted to go to university too. So I thought of, I thought on it for like a long time. I didn't jump right in. I think I was a little bit more cautious back in my younger years. <laughs> Anyways, I ended up um, working as a ECE for four years. And during that time, not every year was like my first year. I had some good periods and some bad periods. The bad periods were pretty dark, like traumatizing, probably will never fully recover from some of the people I worked with and the experiences I had in those situations. And I'm that's another, again, another podcast for another day. I think those people inspired me just as much to become a teacher because I knew I never wanted to be like them in any way, shape, or form. And I also wanted to show to the world ECEs are not stupid. We're not bad, we're not uneducated, we're not incapable, because some of the people I had been surrounded by at some periods in my career had made me feel that way, that I was inherently bad, that my education didn't count for anything, and that I didn't belong. So I decided that I was so angry with the bad situations I had been in And how poorly I saw myself being treated and other ECEs being treated in certain situations. That I was going to change 
life for all ACs. I don't know. Sometimes I have a little bit of a uh, superhero mentality when I get into things. Anyways, I wanted to prove to the world that I was capable and all ECEs were capable. So I finally dug in my heels and applied to school. And um, it was uh, the University of Guelph Humber. I had been to like an information night and they gave us free stuff and they talked about the program and it sounded so great. It was a four year program and there was an option to go on this really neat trip overseas. I applied and I was like, wow, like I'm about to change my life. I'm going to do something really important. I'm going to set a great example for my son. This is going to be spectacular. And I waited for that letter and it came and I was rejected. And in that moment, I felt so stupid forever thinking that I could do something for myself that would make a difference in my life. I felt stupid for thinking that I deserved to earn a fair wage. I felt stupid for thinking that I was deserving of university. I felt stupid for thinking that I deserved to dream big. I felt really stupid. A lot of my life has been spent being told I'm stupid and I'm unworthy and I'm dumb. And in that moment, I really believed it. And that was hard. But I don't know what it was. I think it was the fact that I wanted to earn a good enough income to buy myself a brand new convertible Volkswagen. But I felt that drive again to uh, reapply. So I kept researching programs and I came across the Queen's University Arts and Science online program. And I remember spending so many nights staring at my phone, learning as much as I could about this program and researching all the steps I needed to follow to become a teacher. I knew I needed an undergraduate degree, even though I already had my early childhood education degree. That's something else I hope to change someday because I feel like an early childhood education Diploma should count towards something, especially because I don't even know how people can be teachers without their ECE. Again, another topic for another day. So I applied to the Queen's University Arts and Science Online program and I got in and it felt kind of weird because I'd never heard of Guelph Humber before and that program was longer and more expensive and involved driving to the city every now and then. And somehow I got into this program from a very well-known university and it was less expensive and I didn't have to do any driving. So I had really wished I would have just applied to Queens in the first place, but oh well, I think I needed a little dose of humility. So I began my undergraduate degree and I guess I didn't really know what to expect going into it, but honestly, I kind of loved it. I took courses that really interested me. My degree was in psychology. I forget what the choices were. I know one of them was like math. I think there was also history and global studies. I was really interested in psychology and I knew that I could use it. I knew I was interested in it from my experience in the ECE program. So I was like really excited to log in each day and check out my courses. Uh, Some interesting courses I took were introduction. It was sorry at the time it was called introduction to Aboriginal studies that's literally how at age, what, I think I was 27, how I learned about the residential school system. That course was really heavy and really difficult to take, but it's probably the most important course I've ever taken in my entire life. Uh, Some other memorable courses were probably social determinants of health. Pretty much all of my psychology courses, Spanish, Spanish was really fun, and I took quite a few French courses. And I, I did love the experience of having an undergrad because you're taking such a wide variety of courses and it helps you to experience a lot of new things that you wouldn't have normally had the chance to check out. Sometimes people ask how long it took me to get my undergraduate degree. I was working full time. I knew I couldn't leave work. I wanted to work four days a week, but that wasn't an option. So I had to keep working full time. I decided that the best bet for me being a mom working full-time being really busy I decided that my best bet would be to take a hundred and I think it was 20 percent course load every single term so I finished my three-year undergraduate degree in 15 months 
And um, I cannot suggest anyone ever do that. I highly suggest against it. It's not normal. It's not good. It's not a smart idea. I knew that I wanted to get this degree done and out of the way as quick as I could so I could move on to smashing the next goal. So every term I took a full possible course load, which I think was either six or seven courses. And it was honestly exhausting. I did kind of like it, but uh, I like being busy. But uh, I did become very sick. Um, So my hands would swell and the joints in my hands would swell. My face, like my eyes and my lips would swell up. Um, There were times that I would have to take a day off work because I looked like a cartoon character with giant eyes that I couldn't really open and giant like fish lips because I would just get so swollen and I'm not totally sure what was happening there. Um, But I know the hand swelling would come around the time of essays and uh, I remember having to get an extension once or twice because I physically couldn't I was physically unable to type because my hands would just be like little balloons I wasn't healthy it wasn't a good idea for me to do it that way but uh I survived and got it done my definite suggestion to anyone listening who's thinking about going back to university would be take one or two courses your first term see how it feels and kind of up it from there You do not have to do your undergraduate degree in 15 months. That's not a good idea. Oh, I guess I'll mention here as well, in case you're wondering how I did it in 15 months, because I had a college degree, I was able to get transfer credits. I think it was 18 credits. I could be wrong. Um, And so when you apply to a program like Queen's ASO, uh, you need to ask about transfer credits, especially if you're education kind of relates to what you're doing you want to get those transfer credits because you deserve them and they're going to chop a lot of time um, off of getting that degree so towards the end of finishing up my undergraduate degree I knew it was time to start thinking about teachers college and I knew I had a lot of options but the most reasonable option was definitely going to be to go to school as close to home as possible So Queen's University seemed like the best choice. I did apply to a couple of their universities and I got into them too. Um, But I accepted uh, Queen's University. So I knew that I was going to have to drive back and forth each day. I couldn't just, you know, move my family to Kingston or just leave my family for 16 months Uh, So that was sort of a big thing to consider. I would have to leave work and drive to Kingston every single day. So what I did was I took a one year leave of absence from my job. This, I made this decision because I had a slight worry that if things didn't work out for some reason, I knew I needed a job to come back to. So a leave of absence was my best option. I, uh, I took the leave of absence and the program actually started in, I think it was May. So I did have to leave my classroom, which was really hard. I really loved my kids. I had a cool, interesting, fun class that year. The program was 16 months in length. So it went until I believe the end of the next July. And honestly, Teachers College was a really, really, really good experience I met really awesome people. I had really great professors, some of which I still talk to and work with. And it it just was a variety of really cool experiences. For example, one of our classrooms was outdoor ed and I learned about animals and plants and we did all these really neat things outside. We learned all these activities and things you can do with students to help them learn about the outdoors. It was really great. I definitely noticed that there were things some gaps in what you learn in teachers college for example you do not have any french courses which i found very shocking because french is part of the ontario curriculum and there what that was brought up with a certain individual in my university 
And the response was not professional, <laughs> uh, to say the least. Um, but we won't get into that. But uh, it concerns me that French is not a part of the standard teacher education program. But what I did have in terms of courses was quite enjoyable and interesting and helped me to develop a bit more as a professional. So the 15-month program ended the following July. Uh, during the program, we did have placements, and those were really interesting. I didn't do a kindergarten placement because I had already um, obviously worked in kindergarten for a long time, but uh, it is nor it's the standard for everyone to have a kindergarten placement. So I actually got to do grade five twice and with the same teacher, but two different classes who were vastly, vastly, vastly different. So that's actually an experience I wouldn't trade for the world. It was really neat seeing how she kind of altered the things she did to meet the needs of that specific group of students. It was, it's, it's something you can't replicate. You can't make that experience happen. So it was really cool that that's kind of naturally how things progressed in my program. Uh, as I got to the end of my program, uh, it was time to apply to be a teacher. And obviously, I was going to keep working with my same school board. And so I applied to my school board and all my friends did too. Uh, one of my friends had forgotten to apply and I had said like, hey, man, like just just call and see if you can, you know, get fit in for an interview and you know, I talked her through it and she called and they're able to get her in and it was just really awesome. And uh, I went in for my interview. I was dressed in a really cute professional outfit. I was totally ready to go. I knew what I was going to say. I knew I was a great educator. And so I showed up. I um, walked into that room and it wasn't what I expected. It wasn't anything like my ECE interview. It was... I don't even know how to describe it, but my brain just went, everything is wrong. My brain shut down and it felt like a panic attack. It was as if the entire room was spinning. I wouldn't say it went black, but everything went dark. I felt like I couldn't smell or taste or feel. It was just a really uncomfortable, scary experience where I did not feel like I had control over my mind. I forget most of what I said. I forget what they asked. I kind of forget what happened. And I did not get the job. And that was devastating. And I went, oh, wait, I just did all this. And it turns out I'm too stupid <laughs> to be a teacher. All right, that's fun. And... Luckily, I had a lot of people around me who were kind of shocked and reassured me that a mistake was definitely made. You need to apply again because if anyone deserves to be a teacher, it's you. And having people rally around me like that and my professors and my associate teachers and the people I've worked with in the past to hear them go like, no, this is a mistake you deserve that job. It felt kind of good to hear how much everyone really wanted me to go back and try again. So I um, ended up reapplying to the position and two months later I had an interview that was I think in the same room I had my ECE interview and for some reason my brain was okay with that and the interview was great and I got the job. It was weird. I, I normally interview very well and I like being interviewed and I like helping people prepare for jobs and interviews and stuff like that. I don't know why that sort of panic attack situation happened, but it did. And again, the universe trying to, you know, calm me down <laughs> and give me a dose of reality, I guess. So I now work as a teacher with my school board and I love it. And right now I'm teaching virtual this year. And it is, I love it. I love virtual so much. When I talk to other ECEs about going back to university, there's a few things that they'll commonly say. And one is I'm too old. And me being 27, I could have felt myself too old to go back for sure. Um, some of us, you know, consider 27 and going towards 30 to be old. 
But let's think of the reality here. The human brain isn't de- fully developed until around age 25. Could be earlier, could be later. You're not really going to make good decisions until you're about 30 years old. 27, 28, 29, 30, 40, 50. It's not too old to go back to school. School does not have an age restriction. I mean, or else it would, right? You can go to school getting an education at, you know, 19 when you're not taking things seriously is just as valid as taking it at 29 when you genuinely care about what you're doing and are actually invested in what you're learning about. If anything, I think going to school at a later age is a way better option. No one, I think, well, no one talked about caring that I was almost 30 years old when I was in teacher's college. And some of the best students we had in our program were older. There's also the issue of a lot of people thinking, okay, I was told in high school that I could go to college, but I was told that university would never be an option for me. And I think that is the biggest load of baloney I've ever heard in my life. To act like someone is capable of college but not university is just wrong. You learn different things in different programs, but as long as you're interested and invested in what you're learning, that's what counts the most. So this idea of I'm not smart enough for university, forget that. You were smart enough for college, you did it. So obviously you're smart enough for university. There is not a huge difference no matter what anyone tries to trick you into thinking. If you're able to be an early childhood educator, you're able to be a teacher. And one thing that I think women especially are concerned about in a return to school is not having support of their friends or their family. And to that, I would say this, you have to live with your choices forever, you. So when you are living your, you know, final days and you're sitting there and watching the sunset or whatever it is that people do at the end of their life, what is going to make you proud? Is it going to be knowing that when you were 40, and you mentioned that you really wanted to return to university and your best friend or your mom or your kid or your partner kind of scoffed and then you just blew it off and said, yeah, you're right, I shouldn't. Or is it going to be that when you felt that desire to return to school, you did it, that you overcame any barriers and you furthered your learning and you furthered yourself as a person. You have to write your own narrative. It's no one else's job. You're in charge of what ends up being written in your biography. And is it going to involve you just saying, eh, I don't think anyone else wants this for me? Or is it going to be you stepping up and doing what you want? Something to think about, something to consider. Even if I hadn't have had my bad experiences as an early childhood educator, even if none of the bad stuff had happened, me returning to school would have been just as valuable and important and life altering. There will never be a moment in time that I regret going back to school. And I know when I look at my son that I set a good example for him that education is valuable, post secondary education is powerful, and women are capable of doing important and good and big things. I think it's important that he saw his mom getting up each day and going to school. Even though I didn't have to, it was a choice and he knew that and understood that. There were quite a few days in teacher's college that I actually brought him to school with me and that I think was even cooler. For him to get to see and experience university firsthand, I hope that inspires him to make some really great choices when he's older. I want you to take some time to think about your why. Why do you want to go back to school? Grab a pen and paper and kind of jot those ideas down. Why? I bet it's not to impress someone or just for the money, although money is a perfectly valid reason for wanting to go back to school. We need money to live and retire and do anything we want to do. But I bet it's because you have a passion in you. You have something that you want to offer to the world and you need that piece of paper to be able to do it. 
I bet you care about your community, about your field, about what you're able to do for others. And I think that's very valuable. And it's a special gift that you should share. So if you're considering a return to school, please take yourself seriously and really do consider it. So did my school journey end after teacher's college? Nope. I am currently working on my master's. I'm just under halfway done. It's an online program and it's a professional master of education with a concentration of classroom specialist. So it's a lot of curriculum and pedagogy. Honestly, I can't see myself stopping anytime soon. Doctorate or bust? Yeah, maybe. Anything you set your mind to, you can do it. Believe me, if I can do it, you can. Thank you for listening to my podcast episode today about post-secondary education. I get this question a lot, a lot, a lot, and I hope this kind of clarified a few things about how and why I went back to school. If you have any questions, just let me know. You can also find me on Instagram at ms.spice and everything nice. I respond to DMs. Sometimes it takes me a day or two to find them in the request folder. I can also be found on my blog, Miss. Sorry, nope, spiceedu.wordpress.com, and I'll write that in the description below. I have a newsletter on there I send out every Friday. I'd love for you to join and uh, kind of keep up with what I'm doing. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day and have an awesome week at school. I'll talk to you all later. Make sure to like and subscribe and share.